So I recently bought a Isshin 185 from Banggood and I had a lot of trouble setting this thing up, a lot. I probably spent my entire weekend, if not more, trying to get this thing just to fly. It's supposed to be ready to fly. It is definitely not ready to fly. And uh, I wanna walk you guys through some of the things I did to fix this. So um, first off, I took this the top, um, whatever, part off. Um, it was hard to slide the battery in and out and it just was generally a pain in the butt. So what I did is I just took it off. Um, I got the battery in and then what I did is I actually super glued or hot glued the um, battery cable here uh, because the propeller blades on this thing get really close to the edge here and it was chopping at it. Um, same here, this thing gets like really close and this, this I don't know if it's bad design or what, but it gets really close and I have, I have to find, I have to keep pushing this thing back when I'm flying, otherwise you'll hear it fly and it, you can hear it cutting, which is terrible. I actually bought a bigger battery for this. It's a little bit wider and the props at the battery. So that's, I gotta find a better solution for that. I'm thinking if I put something over, the, put the bat, the top plate back on, maybe put the battery in the top mount, um, I can do that. Um, this thing does not come with a receiver. So um, I purchased this FSAAS um, kind of micro receiver. Um, I have this on my, uh, another drone that I have, so I was familiar with this. Um, this E-Sheen, whatever, 185, comes with one of these, these cables. Um, it is a three, I guess, three wire. Um, this thing also accepts four wire. So what I did is I had to splice the output of this receiver into these wires. So it's kind of a hack job. This is really just a temporary job, but... Um, one thing you'll note is you got um, red, black, and white. And the white is actually the um, PPM wire on this module here. So originally I had white to white, red to red, you know, black to black, and this thing would not fly. Um, only to find out I was an idiot and I needed to um, connect the yellow wire to the white wire on here. So this is kind of a hack job, you know, I crimped them together, heat shrink tube them. Um, but that works. And then I connected this down here with hot glue and it's holding up pretty well. So um, I've flown this, I've, I've tested, I get pretty good range, you know. So I'm not too concerned about that. Maybe I'll, I'll fix it in the future, but for now it works. Um, another problem I had with this thing is right out of the box it beeps really loud and annoying and it annoyed the crap out of me so I actually um, at the beeper here I actually soldered the <laughs> the terminal so it would stop beeping because I probably spent you know two to four hours just trying to diagnose get this thing working and when I had the battery in this thing was beeping like crazy and driving everyone nuts so I I soldered that to make the beeper shut off I could probably uh, remove that pretty easily and get the beeper working again but I don't really fly anywhere where I think I'm gonna lose the drone. So, that's good. Um, so in order to, you know, if you're familiar with this receiver, you know, there's a bind button um, right there that you can bind to this this um, transmitter. So I'll walk you through a couple things I had to do on this guy here to get it work. So, um, you have to make sure PPM's enabled in the menu, um, in system setup. I believe it's under RX setup. And then you go to PPM output and make sure that's on. So I have that on. Um, another thing I had to make sure I did was under whoops, uh, function setup. Um, under auxiliary channels. So I have my channel five through eight representing these switches. Um, that's pretty important because in clean flight, I am using this switch to arm the drone. Uh, this one for the buzzer, which I'm not really using. And this one to set your acro modes. Uh, I think I have this on angle, middle's horizon, and the bottom one is full on free mode, I think. Um, I'm a beginner to all this drone stuff, so I might be getting my terminology wrong. But, so I had to set those. Um, I don't think I had to set 
anything else in here. I don't believe so. So as long as you have those set up and when you turn this thing on, um, I don't have this plugged in right now, but this, this usually blinks red when it's looking for a signal, then it's solid red when it's, when it's bound. Uh, to bind it, um, if you don't know, there's plenty of YouTube videos, but you just power this down, hold down the bind button, turn up. Well, I screwed it up, but you hold that down. There you go, it's an RX binding mode, and then you can bind this. But I don't need to explain that because that's there's plenty of YouTube videos for that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing into Clean Flight and show you my settings here because there's a lot of um, things I had to do via just random Googling uh, to find my way through. Oh, one thing to note, well, I'll cover it in the Clean Flight app here. So let me bring up Clean Flight. Okay, connect. Okay, I have Clean Flight here. Um, always good to calibrate, right? Uh, ports, I have these settings here. I, to be completely honest with you, I don't know what these do and if they're completely right, but that's what I set it to, to get it to work. Um, configuration, Quad X, uh, I have these settings. Once again, I'm a bit of a drone noob, so uh, I'll leave it up to you guys to figure out what you want there. Where it really gets interesting is under receiver, um, you'll want AETR-124, these settings. Um, I can turn this this on real quick. So uh, as, I, as I throttle up, getting the throttle. So that's how I knew it was working. I struggled forever to get to this to work. Um, and the reason I couldn't get any of this to work was because I was an idiot. It didn't have the PPM wire hooked in the right spot. So that's just my my fault because I'm a noob. Um, you'll want Spectrum 124 selected and RX PPM selected and make sure you save it. Under modes, this is, this is probably the most critical part that got me up and flying. Um, this took me forever to figure out. I have my arm, so to actually arm the drone. Um, right now you see the values at 1000. I'm using auxiliary one. So if we go here, let's see if I can get this to go right. I flick the switch, now it's in range. I flick it off, it's off, on, off, on, off. Um, that's where I was showing you in here, the switch channels. Um, angle mode, I have configuring this. So as you see, it's an angle mode as I switch this to the middle. Um, now I've jumped out and I've hit horizon mode and I bring the switch down one more time and I'm fully out of range. I think this is like free acrobat mode. Um, and then I have my beeper configured down here for the switch. I don't even know if that works right now, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I don't think I have any adjustments, no servos, no GPS, no motors. Um, so when I did this, I had no motor control initially. So one thing I found out through trial and error is that the flash version of Clean Flight is 1.13. That's the highest you can go. Um, when I got this drone out of the box, I put it on, I think, 1.14 or 1.15, which was the latest and greatest um, in the list. I was able to flash the firmware on this but I lost all my motor control and these were all zero. I couldn't, I couldn't get this thing to fly. What the heck? Um, also when I did that, um, you know, I, I, I must've done something and I, and I actually bricked this and I couldn't even get into clean flight. And I was like, what the heck? I just basically broke my drone. This is dumb. Um, doing a little bit of Googling. I found out that I can't be on any version higher than this or this drone will not fly but I was bricked, so I could not even downgrade. So if you brick your drone, which I've seen some videos on YouTube where people are like, oh, I've, this is known for bricking itself. If you brick, there is a guide um, here, quadcopter blog, um, some genius figured out how to um, fix the brick, which is amazing. So I did exactly what he said. Basically, um, if, you, if you take apart all this and you get down to the motherboard, um, there is a pin here or whatever a place here and a place here and I took a um, just a small wire 
and I, and I stuck a wire there and I stuck a wire there. And then when you do that, it's supposed to like short and there's some lights down here that blink. And then, um, you know, you're supposed to be able to go into this recovery mode where you can reflash. It took me about an hour to figure out how to do this. Um, what I ended up doing, which is probably not the safest thing to do in the world, but I did anyways, is I put a pin here and here they have it on this diode. I actually went straight to the chip and I had this kind of like stiff wire that was, you know, held, held good in place. And I, <laughs> I held one here and I just went up and down this, this side of the chip until I saw the light turn off. And I think it was somewhere up in here. Um, I saw the lights turn off. And what you have to do is you have to hold it. So you'll see the lights like flash, like it, like the, you know, the operating system's working. Put a, a thing here and I didn't touch the diode, I actually went straight to the chip. I was like, if this thing's bricked and I short something out, don't really care at this point, I'm willing to try anything. I did this like, I don't know, probably 20 times with no harm. I, I saw some sometimes a thing would reboot or short out and die, but um, holding it here and at like five, pin like five or something, just like that, I held it, the light went off. As soon as the light was off, um, I went into clean flight up here, disconnect because I don't think you can, and then here, you know, you choose a board. The sheen is a is a naze, and then the firmware version. Um, so I originally I had this because it was like latest and greatest. Why not? Um, totally doesn't work. You actually need 1.13. This is the highest one you can go. Um, choose all these settings, and then I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't have it taken apart. But as you're holding those pins down, you see the light turn off. It's kind of a two man job, but. You want to hit, you know, load firmware to download the firmware. Then you'll hit flash firmware, and you want to hit flash firmware at the same time you're holding down that pin, and you'll see this thing like go, oh, found bootloader, flashing, loading, going. Um, if you don't hold down those pins, it's never going to boot mode, and this thing will say like failed to find bootloader, and, it, and it's annoying. So. Um, it's not too hard to do. It's really a two man job if you want to do it right. But like I said, I think some people use tweezers. I used, you know, this stiff wire and I just kind of held it there. And with like two arms, I tried to plug in the USB. Oh yeah, you have to plug in the USB by the way. Um, once these things are shorted out and then you plug the USB in. I don't think this works while the USB is plugged in. You actually have to um, unplug the USB um, and then put these on, plug the USB in, and it's kind of difficult, but you'll get it, you'll figure out, you'll see some lights blink, and then you'll, you'll, you'll hit this, and you'll see the lights go off, but you plug in the USB, and then you hit the flash button down here, and this thing will start loading. Um, it's tricky, but you'll figure it out. Um, but once I did that, once I had, you know, 1.13, um, I was up and flying. Uh, if, I'll show you right now, if I plug these guys in. So it beeps up, okay, and then here I am, let me turn the light here, I'm in my MO2, that's my Model 2 because I have this bound to another. Um, basically, I flip this down and um, maybe, whoa, yeah, so it, yeah, we're good, so we're bound. So I got this thing flying, uh, this thing is incredibly fun to fly. And then you see these are still spinning. I could just unarm it and we're golden. So I hope that helps anyone who's watching. Feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you have any other questions, I thought I had bricked this thing and I was ready to throw it away. And you know, through some perseverance, I was able to get this thing up and running. Um, I'm still trying to figure out this battery situation. This thing like, you know, it gets awfully close and I think I've already nicked the battery a few times. I don't know how to make this thing more stable. Uh, if I put this the plate back on that goes here, if I put the battery in the top, if that's a better option, um, let me know. Cause I, I, like I said, I'm very new to all this, but I finally got this thing working after several, you know, hours of troubleshooting. Thanks.